Hey so what's going on guys, me here with Drug Tech, back again with another video for you guys and today I'm be doing a really really special video because I'll be reviewing and testing out the cameras on the Poco X3 NFC and honestly, spoiler alert, I really do love the cameras I think for mid-range device below a thousand ringgit these cameras really do outperform many many other big brands so right here the Poco X3 NFC has a 64 megapixel main camera it has a wide angle camera in the middle and it has a macro camera as well as a depth sensor so this completes the four camera array the quad camera setup there's also a flash up here honestly I think the 64 megapixel camera is a really really capable camera and uh, the others the wide angle camera not so capable in low light conditions but it does a decent job especially if you turn HDR on and turn off the AI functions on the camera app because I think the AI function basically screws up with the photo and adds too much contrast and when you add too much contrast basically it kills the dynamic range so I'm uh, not a fan of the AI feature on the camera app so I usually turn it off so the camera samples you'll be seeing from this Poco X3 NFC will be with AI turned off because I honestly think that's the first thing you should do when you open the camera app turn off the air function and you're gonna get good results however the wide angle camera doesn't support night mode you'll be seeing in the next picture so I'll be only showing you the night mode on the main sensor so anyways uh, let's get right into the camera test but before we do that don't forget to give a like on this video and also subscribe to this channel for more content just like this and also ding that notification bell so you can get notified on the latest videos which I post so without further ado let's get right into the camera test of the Poco X3 NFC So earlier I forgot to mention is that the front camera is a 20 megapixel selfie camera so honestly I think the selfie camera is decent it's considered pretty good of course you cannot compare it with the pixel and the iPhones but a 20 megapixel selfie camera has more than enough detail even the iPhone is not using a 20 megapixel sensor so I think this front facing camera is pretty good but I'll be showing you some samples at the end of the video so guys right now let's go through the photo samples so I'll be starting off with some daylight shots so i'll be shooting some photos outside so i'll be showing you wide angle samples right now you can see even the one with direct sunlight i think it's a very very good camera of course there are some yeah disadvantages with the purple fringing and you know the, the distortion at the side even with the correction for the wide angle camera it's still okay i should say for this price range i think the wide angle camera in daytime it's usable definitely usable so i'll be showing you more pictures right now so you be the judge Okay, so let's move on to the wide angle camera. This is the highlight of this phone because the wide angle camera is a 64 megapixel camera. And the ISP on the Snapdragon 762 processor, I think it's uh, all right. It's not flagship level, but it is good enough. So you can see these wide angle pictures. You can see the dynamic range. Overall, it's pretty good. I'd rather not have the highlights blown out because I'd rather have the shadows crushed so I can tweak it in post. But if the highlights are blown out, basically there's no saving the picture. You can see the, the sky and even all the bright areas of the picture are well exposed. So the HDR does a pretty good job. Of course, you can see the lens and some purple fringing as well, even the wide angle lens, but it's to be expected from a mid-range phone, costing less than a thousand ringgit. So here are more pictures. It has a nice uh, bokeh effect, I should say, blur background. And so it creates some separation because this is a one over 1.7 inch sensor. So it's, it's all right, it's feasible. It's bigger than iPhone's sensor, definitely. So it creates some uh, shallow depth of view. So I do like that. All right, let's move on to portrait shots. Okay, this is where the two megapixel depth sensor comes into play because the two megapixel camera actually is supposed to help out with depth, determining the foreground and the background. So you can see right here, the picture of my scooter. It does a decent job, I should say, a decent job. Okay, when it comes to complicated subjects just like the leaves in front here uh, this is where the camera really really struggles uh, there's really missed out especially in, you can see those small small details where the camera has missed out the blur in terms of the edge detection I think it's adequate my hair is not that complicated so I think it's pretty all right so next moving on to video samples all right guys so this is a front facing camera test of the Poco X3 NFC outdoors so you can see it's pretty bright this is in, uh, in the afternoon so let's see how HDR is on video. So this is in 1080p at 30 frames per second. You can see right here, bright sky behind me. My face is uh, well exposed, I should say. Let's take a look at the back. You can see if it exposes for the sky, it doesn't expose for my face well. But that's a drawback naturally. This is a mid-range device with mid-range processing. All right. So let's see how stabilization is. Uh, it's pretty good on 
the screen. Not sure how it is if I export it. But overall it's a respectable front-facing selfie camera. Okay, so now we are shooting in the wide angle lens. As you can see right here, stabilization is pretty good. The lens is not really good quality, I can see some purple fringing. Okay, let's, set, let's test out stabilization walking upstairs. So the wide angle camera doesn't have OIS just like all the other devices. But I think stabilization is pretty good in good lighting. Alright, so let's switch to the main camera, 64 megapixel camera. Alright, so now we are shooting on the 64 megapixel camera. It's not too bad, I can still see some purple fringing on the leaves right there. If I put it down something like this, you can see purple fringing. So let me know how the mic sounds as well. But overall, pretty good. Let me point it up at the clouds. Let's see how dynamic range is. Uh, it's okay, but the blacks are pretty crushed right here. But very respectable video quality on the mid-range device. Let me walk down the stairs right here. Let's see how stabilization is. I'm walking like normal. Let me run. Pretty good camera. I uh, really do like the quality in general. Don't expect iPhone-like video quality because this is a mid-range device and it costs like one, one fraction of the, of the cost of an iPhone. Alright guys, so I've been testing out uh, autofocus on the main 64 megapixel camera. Let's go to close-up subject. Very fast. And I like the natural bokeh you get. The background, you can see the background is uh, nice and creamy. Quality is pretty good overall. Textures are good. So now we are testing the POCO X3 NFC in uh, artificial lighting conditions. Uh, consider this low light. Yeah, so you can see how the camera performs in terms of quality and also stabilization. Let me just shake this camera, you can see the jittering. But if you are panning smoothly, there's no jitter at all. Autofocus is also pretty good. You can see it's pretty fast and reliable. When you shake it, even so slightly, you can see the jittering right there. That's something that happens with the GoPro as well. That's why the video quality like decreases when it gets into low light conditions. But anyways, uh, pretty good for this price range considering that the camera doesn't even have OIS. Even the main sensor as well. So I think this is a pretty good camera setup. You can see the autofocus is fast and responsive. Right, so let's move to some indoor lighting shots. So you can see right here, I actually took a picture of Pikachu right here. So you can see nice depth of feel, very low noise. In fact, in fact, I think the noise is very well controlled. You can see a picture of this model Civic Type R as well. This is not in night mode, this is in standard mode. So you can also see a picture of my phone boxes and so on and so forth. All right, now let's switch to wide angle indoor shots. You can see dynamic range stuffers. You can see the mouse pad actually and the laptop, in fact, and the speakers behind it actually loses a lot of detail. So it becomes really, really dark in the shadows. All right, so now let's switch to night mode. Night mode really makes a ton of difference in terms of dynamic range and also detail. So you can see noise levels are even way better with night mode. You can see night mode actually does boost up the shadows and also balances the highlights pretty well. So to end this video, I think this camera camera is pretty good overall. I have nothing to complain with this camera. I wish the wide angle camera was a tad bit better. Just a tad. So it doesn't have the chromatic aberration, purple fringing as well from the lens. I just wish they put in a better lens. But I'm considering the price, I think it's a bit too much to ask for. But overall, I think this camera exceeds my expectation to be honest. Uh, for the price, really really good set of cameras. Alright, so that concludes our video. I hope you guys liked this video. This is my very first camera test. I always wanted to do camera tests but I didn't know how to do it. So I hope this video actually helped you make your purchase decision whether to get the X3 NFC if you're a big camera hit. But uh, honestly, for me, just get it because I think it's very worth it for the price. Alright guys, so that's all for this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.